uh, in the game too. And this is what I like about how EDG this time into game number two has changed their draft. Jace not going to the jungle because remember, Jace's jungle clearing has been nerfed to the ground in patch 4.4D and yes, it's still usable to a degree but not as efficient compared to the past. So good adjustments coming from EDG having the Evelyn into the jungle instead so Jace to be expected coming into the mid lane or the bottom lane. Now when it comes to the bans, Alistar, Sever, Gragas, and Lee Sin has been removed to trace esports priority onto the Nautilus as a support. Mm. We'll see if they'll lock this in. The thing is, there's still a lot of champions open on the side of ADG to to prevent the the Nautilus to having uh, such a huge uh, effect. Uh, they do lock it in. Zaya can still be picked here by alone. He can just pop the 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 ultimate of the Zaya to dodge away from the depth charge. Sivir is also actually Sivir is banned, so might just be a Zaya pick for them. Leona, we haven't seen. Uh, often being picked, one of the lower priority comes to engage supports, but it does get locked in here by Langui. Yeah, it's not as as a priority as before, but Leona is still a decent Ooh. support to go through into a composition given huh. how much crowd control he has innately. But the Tristana will be locked in by EDG, so th the reason why they're able to do these double AD into the bottom lane and the mid lane is because they have Evelyn. They have an AP jungle, but Trace Esports mm. answers with the Shivana. Yeah. Uh, Shivana going to be more of a scaling jungler in the hands of Hueba. Will it be on Trace Esports to allow Hueba to get to these positions to be able to scale later in the game? I'm actually very, more curious about the Sistana and where this Tristana is gonna go because EDG can still work this around. They can still put this in the bot side of the map in the high in the uh, sorry in the mid lane in the hands of Yo. But with the adjustment coming in from Trace Esports as well, Yusa is gonna be the one who's gonna be manning uh the Zoe in the in the Dragon Lane. As you mentioned, Infi, uh it's it, it is a switcher, it is something that it can still be done. We have seen uh Zoe in the past. Have more pre have more prevalence in the bot side rather in the mid lane. So we'll see how this matchup will pan out. Will Zoe be able to 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 dodge away from the engage coming from the Leone? Because what's dangerous in the bot lane right now for the EDG is there's so much damage coming in from the Tristana when the target is locked down by the Leona. So it might be tricky here uh, when the matchup does put, uh, come through. It will be uh, interesting to how these two teams will be battling here in the game to EDG once again a similar fashion onto that early onto Jace and even Leona being a strong early game champion but now they have late game late game insurance we're in the Tristana and they have Evelyn for the likes of Trace Esports pretty much their composition once again very well built draft to to say so the least but when it comes to this early game, they have a disadvantage up against EDG. Mm, yeah, uh, they really do have a disadvantage, especially in the bot side, because Tristana and Leona can just do absurd amounts of damage early on. Yusa is actually the one playing in the middle lane right now. Uh, this is something that we were talking about early on before game one during the player intros where where these guys are gonna go because both of them have played mid lane for trace esports but since in the prevalence of the marksman meta where sometimes two marksmen are played right now it's corn in the bot side and previously in the game before yusa was the one who played Sivir to great effect for trace esports which we saw earlier because he wasn't really challenged that much by edg due to the lineup that trace esports had in that game and in in addition to that, Tracy first as well, you saw on the server had pretty much free hitting all throughout each and every single team fight, which is definitely something that you want on a server because you have the on the hunt and you have the boomerang blades that could bounce and ricochet onto these uh, enemy teams. But thus far. This is to be expected by both EDG and Tracy Discourse. Their junglers are not gonna go aggressive coming into the early phases of this game in the yeah. laning phase, given how Savanna and even Evelyn needs to reach at level five, how Evelyn unlocks the invisibility, and how yeah. Shivana unlocks the dragon's descent. Yeah, they're both not effective uh, in the early game. They don't really have any 
big gank tools. Yes, Devlin has the charm, but it takes a while uh, to really to really take infect. It's not as easy to just go in, drop CC, and gank a lane. So both of these champions do prefer level 5s to try and put down some pressure. Uh, but at the same time, both of these champions also thrive better when it comes to the late game points of the game. A bit of a scuffle here in the mid lane that we're seeing right now. Yeah, Guzan is played, but instead, I won't be kind of engaged coming through for the likes of Tracy Esports. They have so much CC, but Tack comes back, care one turret on Skid. Yeah, uh, that's good for him. Doesn't go down. First Blood hasn't been given up here by any of these teams. I mean, 0 7 11 used the flash, immediately goes for the uh, for the ultimate on the Evil and trying to execute the Nautilus, but the Nautilus is just too tanky. Even in the early parts of the game, not not being bursted down uh, easily by this assassin. But now on the top side, though, oh, that could have been dangerous. That could have been a kill uh, right there by 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 Lee uh, Shao Zhang stuck a bit too long uh, in the top side, and this is the thing that makes it tricky between a Fiora and a, and a Renekton. Although Shao Zhang pops ultimate. Ignite as well, Dominus is there, a lot of sustainability, they cannot go for that 1v1 as Zisa is down low already with a wave pushing in. So Ops to back away. Yeah, Ops to back away just pops the Dominus as you mentioned to shove the wave, force the force it to shove back towards him, not allow this Fiora to have any moment uh, to maybe freeze the lane. Uh, but that's also the tricky thing that we have been observing when it comes to the matchup in the top side. It's Fiora having a bit more reach due to her lunge able to poke down the vital points of the Renekton. The Renekton can't really do anything because if he tries to dash in and auto and stun with uh, with the Ruthless Predator, it can be blocked by the Fjord. So what usually happens is they just have this kind of equilibrium uh, in the top side. Oh no. With her charm, the last caress will not be available for that first damage and Yusa will be able to still go back. Yeah, that could have been a kill uh, in the mid lane as well, but very defensive is the gameplay right now for both of these teams not allowing anyone to just get a big advantage with nothing in return this ward those spots out Weba. so edg does have a timer on this jungler knowing where the shivana is at this point it might not be that consequential because Weba still has a very good timing on the recall as you get into this five uh closer to the five minute mark with the dragon and the herald uh going up soon dragon is to be expected the objective that Trace Esports would want to prioritize since they do have a Shivana in their lineup. Just stacking on the, the stacks of Shivana to be able to unlock those passives. And now Dragon and Rift Herald will come out in 20 seconds. How EDG really do this with their 7-Eleven patting themselves on top side of the map. Given how, how well they go into an early game comp, they could still go in for the Rift Herald as well to really accelerate that snowball potential. <laughs> oh, actually, big kill right there in the mid lane. First blood going in immediately to favor of EDG. Top side's also in danger because of the Shastana and the Leona having so much pressure on the kills as well as the tower being brought to below half HP. Yeah, and now Weibo will be able to secure the dragon for themselves, the ice break, and EDG once again starting up the Rift Girl expectedly they will be able to take that for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I think this replay just a very simple kill right there coming from Zero Seven Eleven, knowing that the Zoe doesn't have flash, using it earlier. Goes back to the, another revisit to the Minded and just takes her down. And that's one of the things that, that's scary about the Evelyn, right? As you mentioned, the invisibility that she gets when she hits level 5 makes it very hard to know where she is. Makes it hard for to, to prepare uh, for 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 a gank coming from this champ. And with the Herald being brought down the mid lane, this is a good sign right now for EDG. They're fixing up some of the mistakes that they did back in game 1. Yeah, now first turret taken down by EDG into the mid lane as well. So a huge gold injection for Jace in the mid lane. Gets a second charge as well. Shelly's Shelly's really hard working. <laughs> game two. Yeah, she's work working overtime uh, in this game to uh, Infinity. Also EDG getting another turret in the bot side uh, with the Tristana. But Trace Esports has not been caught lacking 
When it comes to the tra uh, to the to the tower department, we also see Hueba on the side lanes taking things down. They have taken top side turret, so at least on that side, they might not have evened out the turret count yet, but they have gotten one into their favor. And as you're mentioning earlier, early game is really gonna be in favor of EDG because of the champs that they have chosen. This Jace, this this Renekton has will be able to put down some of the pressure, but it really has come from the place from 0711. 0711's ganks have been pivotal in allowing EDG the space to get a couple more turrets, a more gold into their favor, as well as the first blood earlier. And right now looking at the gold, it's almost a 4k gold lead for EDG. Almost a 4k gold lead. EDG is keeping up. And the, the lion's share of this advantage is more towards that top first blood. They were able to take a huge gold injection. It is in favor for EDG and another turret coming into the bottom lane. So Trace Esports could definitely like close the gap when they take a couple of turrets of their own. But EDG mm -hmm. at this stage is on a good position compared to game one. Yeah, uh, definitely a lot better position uh, for them here in game two than in game one blue side for them has been the, the side that's similar as well and now you've got another turn the to top side all outer tier turrets are gone for trace esports edg will now have all of the avenues to get inside the jungle of trace esports put down vision set up traps and looking at the composition of edg as well they do have those tools they have a leona they have an evelyn if these two champions come together they could have just a perfect cc chain to allow this this uh evelyn to deal so much damage and now trace esports kind of uh Caught in the back foot, they really need to figure things out how to stop the bleeding because EDG is in a good position to just snowball this game into their favor. Yeah, snowball this game out of proportion. EDG right now have all the tools to be able to pursue a bigger advantage. They could balloon their 4k go lead into a much higher degree, especially coming into 9 minutes off this matchup. And Shivana also building onto Divine Sunder, not the likes of Trinity Force, means that when it comes to the, uh, the, the damage aspect, it will not be as much right now with the Divine Sunder for Heiwa. Heiwa. Yeah. And now though, looking at how things are panning out, there's still a dragon that's about to come out and Mountain Drake about to come out soon. And Trace Esports is trying to put a lot more vision right there. Yusa getting chunk uh, by the Evelyn. Feeling, I feel like the, la fi the, the last embrace was used right there. So maybe no ultimate in the next fight. The bot lane though. Oh, Jeez. wow. Zenith Blade followed from the Solar Flare. And then you just shot one shock blast. Oh my. Yeah, it, it's showing right now that the, the damage that EDG has, the strength of their composition is showing uh, here against Trace Esports. I don't think even uh, they, uh, Korn expected any of that. And now it's 4v5. They're trying to challenge this dragon. Attack in danger. But Yon Yusa as well came in with the CP Trouble Bubble connected onto x Jank. From a CC, goes Girl onto you. In danger, Shock Blast to the face for Lee Sao. Already brought down so low. And CP Dribble Bubble onto X Chang as well, but won't be able to come through over the hills, Ooh. over the walls, and does bar. That engage will be the win for EDG. Yeah, uh, EDG tried to see if they could get more kills, tried to get a bit more advantage against Trace Esports, but the immediate pullback from Trace Esports, making use of the terrain uh, that uh, that allowed, uh, gave them a bit of an advantage there in the blue buff, allowed a lot of their AoE abilities to hit on the members of EDG. But even though that fight did not exactly go heavily in favor of EDG, they were still able to get the dragon stopping soul uh soul point uh for for trace esports also is deterring this shivana to get a lot more of those uh a lot more out of her passive because of that dragon Let's see. right now trace esports a massive disadvantage already with a 5k gold disadvantage here in the deficit up against edg and the thing is when it comes to the past history as we have talked about and touched up a while ago during the pre-show is that EDG was able to fight up against Trace Esports during the regular stage and they beat Trace in a 2-0 in a best of yes. 3 matchup and this time Trace Esports winning that first game yes that's a big difference that Trace Esports is doing but still EDG 
they really want to repeat history here to bring down Crazy Esports once again. Huh? And that's where that's where playoffs are different, right? Because in the regular season, it's best of threes. You just need to win two games. You just need to prepare uh, for at most three games. May just two strategies that would work against your opponent. Here in a best of seven series, it's where teams really get tested. There's a lot more different, a lot more games attack getting caught out. Attack being caught out. Lansby with a Zen Blade with a lot of crowd control. That will be the death of Nautilus from that fight. EDG. And this is what we have mentioned during the draft. That Leona may not be the most prioritized support in the game. But mm -hmm. he or she has so much crowd control. Yeah. And right now, once again, Zenplay to the back. It's one that will be the target here. Exhausted. No escape for Fiora. EDG bought themselves a two numbers advantage. Yeah. They're getting two kills. There's still some poke coming out from Yusa and Korn right here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. This Baron will most likely be secured here by EDG. Tracy's for trying their best. Oh. That will be EDG. That will be securing the Baron for themselves. And Hueba falls as well. Yeah, Hueba falls. Trying to go for that hero play. Going for a possible uh, possible steal. So you're 7 of just playing around this top side. Even though you're invisible, the, the the minions are still having the Baron buff, so they kind of know that they might be there uh, in the area right now, Evelyn. So at this point in time, though, with the Baron in the hands of EDG, it gives him a lot of space, a lot, a big buff to be able to take down turrets. We're gonna see here the replay as Korn, Yusa, and Weiba try to go for the steal, but it wasn't enough. As soon as they came in there, an, an, an immediate smite from EDG's jungler. EDG. Now getting that pressure on the bottom lane and top lane, or well, mid lane rather. As they get two tier 2 turrets for themselves, a lot of gold injection once again uh, to alone you and even the rest of the crew. Now top quadrant jungle, Hueba is getting pinned down. We'll be able to go out with the dragon's descent, but is being chased out. x Jang is on the run, is on the chase. There's 7-11 as well, onto the right position and Hueba will be brought to the wall, brought to the ground, and EDG secures the jungler. Yeah, Hueba being a bit, of a, bit out of position for with the rest of his team, trying to go for a shove in the top as well as farming out his jungle. And that's the thing with Shivana. The, Shivana needs to be able to get more items to be able to make use of her passive to really scale into the game. But with the spot that Trace Esports find themselves, Hueba is left wanting, is left needing of resources to be able to challenge the composition that EDG has. And EDG has so much more of, a, of an advantage, has a bigger bank right now. 10k, 11k gold, re gold lead right now for this team. And the snowball really is coming into effect here for EDG. They are pr in a prime position to take game two of the series. Yeah, 20 seconds left as well before the Ocean Drake comes up and EDG is already positioning themselves into a better lead, a better position advantage against Trace Esports with no tier 2 turrets. In addition to that is another layer of hardships for Trace. Yeah, definitely a lot of hardships right now from Trace. They need to dig deep, they need to figure out how to force mistakes from EDG or also to find those mistakes coming out from EDG and try to capitalize on those, be ready whenever EDG, if EDG does give that opportunity, but still the lead of EDG is too, too big at this point that just one mistake won't be enough for Trace Esports to get back into this game. It has to be multiple. It has to be multiple times that Trace Esports get picks, get kills, get gold, get uh, get objectives uh, into their favor. And it's going to be very tough uh, right now. They're playing with a very small map. The amount of territory that they're getting, EDG is just letting them have that at this point. But each time that Trace Esports walks up, there's a war. There's something that spots them out, something that gives information for EDG to know where they are. As you mentioned earlier as well, Dragon has been taken by EDG. Trace Esports did not try to go for the contest because if they do, they might have lost the game then and there. But Baron is now going to be up on the map. It's just spawned right here and EDG is positioning themselves. Mid lane though. There's 7-11! Last caress is the last time that Fiora sees the light of day coming in from that 1v1 and EDG once again gains the numbers edge against Trace. Yeah, great pick right there 
Coming from the jungler, coming from 0, 7, 11. And now it's a numbers advantage, as you mentioned here for EDG. But look at where that Renekton is. Renekton is so deep into the base of Trace Esports. So deep. Going in for the inhibit turret as they take it down. Zenith Blade on the pack as well. Way but wants to go in to deny that, but will Ooh. not be able to do so. EDG is just so fed. And Renekton comes through to go for the finishing blow. And Yusa, the only one left standing, left on his lonesome to defend while EDG has everything their power to take the Baron. And as you mentioned, right, one thing we're going to talk about in the draft is how much crowd control Leona has. We just saw that in display. Hueba was not allowed to play the game. Hueba came in, never got a chance to auto, never had a chance to run away because Langi was right in front of him, just putting down the hard CC. Now in the turret will be the target. Langi once again, then it played on the least sound. No escape. You saw! <laughs> no fountain can heal you faster than EDG's damage. And now Nexus will be the target as EDG brings the series to an even one to one. Yeah, EDG showing up here in game two, taking down Trace Esports, evening things out one to one.